After an exciting Egyptian adventure with Kay and the gang, exploring culture, music, dance and arts, meeting lovely people from all around the world, I felt inspired and invigorated. With fresh motivation, I signed up to the Belly Dance Now International Challenge to go deeper into my dance journey. The first challenge was classical Egyptian. We were given a selection of music and I went for a version of El Hob Kululu. I fell in love with the instrumental parts and the heartfelt lyrics. I did some research into Om Kofum and booked some private sessions with my mentor Charlotte Desorges. I listened closely to the music, noting rhythms, melodic shapes, key instruments and how each section made me feel. I'm not a musician and so it was more of an abstract dancer's interpretation. I found a translation of the lyrics and tried to match it up to the music as best I could, noting key bits I could emphasise or felt were more interesting, and taking some time to reflect on the meaning as well. It made me feel quite emotional at times. You're feeling this, aren't you? Yes. <laughs> For my technical training, I wrote a complimentary fitness and conditioning plan and took some classical Egyptian classes online. I particularly enjoyed Heather on the tour online, featuring expressive and lyrical arms. I loosely choreographed each section, but spent lots of time improvising, especially the lyrical part so that I could focus on feeling it. I gathered feedback from my mentor, who really helped me to stay more present in the lyrical section, putting all of my emotional energy in. I prepared my costume and mise-en-scene, deciding to go for something that felt more romantic to match the lyrical meaning. I opted for softer, flowy materials and rose petals in the corner of the room. And I chose my vintage-looking bra and belt set I bought at a market in Cairo. And then the big day was here, production. I gave myself two days to tidy up the choreo, run technical rehearsals, and then chose the version I liked best for submission. I felt motivated and was really enjoying the challenge, but something wasn't quite right. I was just so tired and felt faint whilst dancing in some of the takes. I'd had some other unusual symptoms and decided to go to the doctors the day after filming. I found out I was severely anemic. My red blood count was just 43, about one third of what it should be. I was sent to hospital for an urgent iron infusion and it was pretty scary. I took some time out to recover, spend some time with loved ones and eat some meat. What I learned from this experience was to listen more closely to my body. And if something seems off, even if I can't explain it, go and get it looked into, using my shimmies as a barometer. About a month after the infusion, I started to feel so much better. I even started running again. The second challenge was folkloric and I chose Nubian dance. When I was in Cairo, I watched Nubian dance performances, which I loved. It made me feel so joyful, especially Ashraf Kodak at Yasmina's B&B. I did some background research to understand the context of Nubian dance and watched lots of YouTube and Instagram videos for inspiration. To develop my technique, I took classes online from Charlotte Desorges' Undeniable's website, but also directly from the Raider Troupe in Cairo on Zoom with principal choreographer Mohamed Saleh. I felt a little starstruck. For this challenge, I really wanted to explore costuming and have a go at creating something. I did some research online and found Farida Fahmy's ebooks with original folklore design she created for the Raider Troupe. What I loved about this book was not only the stunning hand-drawn designs, but all of the notes that came with it, which explained how the dresses were adapted to the dance and the stage. But where could I find such a dress? I took my search to Church Street Market near Edgeware Road in London, where I had previously lived for many years. For a Nubian dance costume. I cannot believe my luck. I have found... Um, a... I couldn't believe my luck. I found a long, loose, embroidered dress from Egypt. Using the notes from Farida Fahmy, I created a short seamstress brief and marked up the cuts to create the shape of the Nubian dress. Mohamed Saleh also shared pictures of more modern interpretations of Nubian-style dance dresses, which had flowy materials and embellishments. 
I decided to customize my dress further by sewing additional coin belt strings, inspired by a video Yasmina had shared in the Facebook group. To choreograph my number, I read the translated lyrics and chose my favorite combos to go with the music. I also adapted a combo I learned directly from Mohammed Salah, as well as creating some of my own. I thought a lot about authenticity whilst choreographing, the difference between tradition and modernity, between folklore and fake lore. I found a quote directly from Raider in an interview transcript which inspired me. It said, When you are inspired to do your own choreography, there is a risk. You can change things and they become something else and the people will not like it. There is no rule and you have to use your taste. I imagine myself as one of the people taking this step. If I could do a variation, what would I do? If you are lucky, then it will keep the same spirit. And so overall, whilst I played a bit with the formations and directions, I tried to apply the technique I had learned and just feel the vibe of the music and enjoy it like I did in Cairo. I hope I am lucky. Yeah.